G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today, I'm going to show you how to find expired domains and perform expired domain research so you purchase the right domain for the purpose that you're purchasing it. Let's jump into it. Now, what I'm going to show you is the method that I utilize when I am trying to find expired domains and when I perform expired domain research. Because if you buy the wrong expired domain, you may have just wasted a fair bit of dollars. All right, now let's jump into it. The first thing that you're going to need to, whenever you're looking to perform or trying to find expired domains, you need some tools. Now, these are the two tools I, I use. So I use expireddomains.net and Spamzilla. Now, I just want to give you a big caveat here, guys. All right, I'm talking about expired domains. I am not going to necessarily be covering GoDaddy auctions. That is something that you can utilize, but the video, is how to find expired domains. Generally, GoDaddy, yeah, might might have dropped, might not have dropped. This is for expired. So if you're looking for GoDaddy stuff, this isn't the video. There'll be another one coming out, but this is how you can find expired domains. So let's start with Spamzilla. So this is a great tool to try and actually find some expired domains. But again, I actually will start here, but to be completely honest, I actually think that it doesn't always show everything I want. So we're going to be quite generic, but what we can do is you can set up a lot of filters. So you can set up, let's say the TRD. So let's say you only want a domain that's a .com.au or you only want a .com. They're the type of filters you set up. If you have a Hrefs, which I definitely do not, <laughs> you can connect it in here. My loyal subscribers, you'll know why I don't have a Hrefs. So <laughs> you can set that up, but something, and, and this is where I predominantly focus is over here on Trustfly. This is where I start. I love Majestic. I think Majestic is such an underrated tool for backlink analysis. Like maybe that's why I get all my secret little wins, guys. Who knows? Maybe it's because everyone else doesn't use Majestic, but I love Majestic. Now, what I prefer doing is trying to have a higher Trustfly. That's something that I look look at. So when I'm going through here, as you can see with Spamzilla, you can add all of this stuff in here. You can put whatever you want. You can do SEMrush. You can do this. You can do that. Main thing I focus on is this metric. This metric to me is where I start. You can put in traffic, sure. You can do all of that, sure. But again, SEMrush will say this. They'll say that. I like being consistent in the SOPs that we utilize when I'm looking for expired domains and when I'm performing expired domain research. All right. So first thing I'd do is I don't really want anything less than a 10. All right. I wouldn't want anything less than a 10. Reason for that is I want something that's semi-powerful. A 10 trust flow is kind of powerful, especially if it's something uh, locally. Now you can select the categories. So anything that you want to talk about, let's say it's just business, it's computers, health, home, recreation, anything like that that you want to basically go after. So we could go business and then there's subcategories of business. So as an example, accounting, if we wanted to go after one for accounting, let's do accounting. So just to make it nice and easy. So we've got the trust flow in there. We can scroll down a little bit and we want to make sure that we've got the apply filter. Sorry, it's over here. So save filter, definitely. Oh, no, I don't want to save it. Sorry, just want to apply it, apply filter. So now what this is going to do is only look at domains in the accounting niche according to Majestic. Again, that's why I love Majestic because Majestic is semi-accurate at forecasting what industry things are in. So I can come over here, have a look, business accounting. Now this will be a GoDaddy auction, as you can see, and you can look over here at the price. Looks pretty cheap. Look at that trust flow, 27. Ooh, that's pretty good. Now, one way I will filter to begin with is the trust flow. So from highest to lowest, it's just how I do it. It's just how I do it. So that's how you can look at Spamzilla. The other way that you can do it, and the like that Spamzilla is like, I think it's like 40 bucks or something a month, guys. So, you know, but this is your free option. You want a free option? Go to expireddomains.net. Free option is good to go. Uh, now, same thing. So you can do it. It's a little bit more tedious. It's not as friendly to search with. But as an example, you can still start to have a look and you can still filter. So you can filter by profiles and you can filter by 
actual keywords as well. And you can do the exact same thing over in Spamzilla there. So if we go, if I've just put in accounting as an example, let me just show you before we jump in it. Here's a trust flow metric as well. So if we go show filter, so that you can see this filter right here. All right. So see, this is a filter, very similar to what we're doing over at Spamzilla. And we can have a look at places that we want and don't want to find our expired domain in. All right. So we can see how long like new listings, so things that will perhaps only drop for 12 hours. But just caveat, guys, just because you click like, let's say seven days. So I do have it filtered to seven days when I'm trying to look for something a bit fresher. It could have gone down two years ago and you'll put seven days. Just be aware of that. <laughs> be aware of that because one of my one of my team members actually was like, oh, it's only been down for seven days. And it's like, no, it hasn't, mate. <laughs> so just be aware of that. That's something that you want to look at. Now, if you come over here, <clears throat> Majestic, the tab Majestic, you can go your minimum trust flows. So I'd, again, citation flow, eh, it's not really the metric I focus on. Trust flow is. All right, so that's, again, where we can put in the 10. We can put in a 10 in there. And again, you can add all of these additional things. You can do the categories again. So same thing is if we go to business uh, accounting, let's hope it's up top. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Cool bananas. So we can do that. How sick is that? Let's go apply filter. So, but this is where you want to start. This is how you can use these types of tools to find expired domains with tools. Now, what you need to do from here is I'll show you a heap of different methods on how you can actually perform domain, expired domain research. Because if you purchase the wrong expired domain, there's no point. You actually might do worse than if you just left alone, started afresh. So let's have a look. So we've got the options here. Let's come over to Trustflow. Let's filter by the most powerful Trustflow. All right. So these guys here, I don't know, maybe these guys here, baldwinsaccounting.co.uk. All right. Now it's a $6,000 domain. So am I going to buy that domain? Probably not sixes. That's a bit rich. I'm really only happy, happy spending 500 bucks to be completely honest an expired domain because you risk, you run a risk with expired domains. I've had things that I've set up before. I'm like, oh, it's got this link. We set everything back up. Eh, the link was gone. It's finished. So I don't like it. Uh, expired domains for me are cheap wins, cheap, cheap things that I'll set up. Not, I'm not going to go out here and pay this type of money. That's just not Ronald Osborne. <laughs> I do not that guy. Do not do that, guys. But as an example, so, you know, make offer, make offer, back order, uh, where something that's a bit cheaper. So I'm not even seeing something that's a bit cheaper on, on these pages here. So what, make an offer. Again, how much is that? So we might need to jump over to expired domains, but that's how you can use expireddomains.net. So we can have a look over here, see the price. Well, it's saying it's 12 bucks. All of these are saying available. All right, cool. Let's just grab these guys. Let's just grab this one. So this is up the top. Uh, no, this is make sure that this is an expired 20 citation flow. You can have a look at the majestic backlinks as well. You can start to see how many backlinks there are. So what you can do, and this is how I perform research on expired domains. I'll show you everything now, actually. And it's good that we're using Spamzilla. So what would I do from here? I want an accounting domain. What do I do? I'm setting up, let's say, a PBN. I'm setting up a PBN in this circumstance. What would I do? How am I going to do this? What am I looking for on Spamzilla? Trustflow is the main thing that I'll start with, to be completely honest. But as you can see, that this is a an auction domain. It's saying $12 over here. So maybe it is, you know, it, it's gone through and it is only worth the 12 bucks. But just be aware that, again, it expires on the 17th. Um, so maybe it's not. It could be sold for more. So let's start with ones that are actually expired. And when you see this, this generally means that it's expired. So what would I be doing? Okay, well, these guys have the next, they're the next one with trust flow. Now what's next? Well, I can look at the backlinks. How many backlinks are they identifying? 16. They might have some powerful backlinks to get there. 16, 33. This is more so where I'd be wanting to start to see. However, you can also look over here with the site language. Now, that will also depend on what you're looking for. I'm not going to go into the 
absolute mini details of site language. You guys will know this if you're looking for an expired domain. And I hate videos that don't just jump into it. So you know that like site language is an important factor. Don't set up one that's, you know, Chinese. <laughs> don't buy a Chinese domain if you're trying to set something up in the States. You don't do that, guys. You would know this. So you can start to scroll down and you can filter out by the language if you want. So again, we can come back to the filter. We can literally go to site language, which will be do, 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 site language, deselect all. Uh, we can go English only and let's go apply. And then this will show English only sites. So now it's saying English only sites that there's three of. Well, there you go. So what other options do we have? We've got one down here that has 114 backlinks. We've got one up here that has 11. Where would I start? Well, again, be aware this is on the GoDaddy auctions and it has not, it's yet to expire. So what I would be doing is starting with this guy here. Now this is a little bit limited, but backlink numbers is, I start with Trustflow, then it's backlink numbers. That's where I start. Now, what do I do? So I will grab this domain and then I will jump over to SEMrush to perform a bit of research on this domain. Now, when you are doing expired domain research, it's very important that you be aware that a lot of the backlinks could have dropped off. So what you're looking at might not be anything relevant. So if I'm doing backlink uh, expired domain research, right? I can't see that there was any traffic here for two years. That concerns me. That does concern me. So if I have a look at all time, I specifically like, whoa, we're going to have to come back a few years, guys, to see what it was. So generally, I will do this. I will have a look and see what keywords they were ranking for. That's a great way of researching the domain because you want to make sure that when you're looking for it, that it's all relevant. So we've got professional tax, you know, professional tax, tax preparation. Like This is looking pretty good. So that's good. It's not talking about weird and funky stuff. That's one of the things that I want to look at. So I start with a keyword research. Next thing, backlinks. Let's have a look at the backlinks. Let's look at the referring domains. Let's see if there's any any juice in there. When we're performing this, uh, when we're trying to find expired domains, we want to have a look like this is mainly why we're doing it. All right. So, you know, have we got anything juicy in here? Anything a bit powerful? That's uh, a 30 authority score. That's it's, it's, yeah, semi-powerful. Um, they're pretty powerful. That's they're two not too bad links, you know, not not too bad. Let's have a look and see what the uh, anchor text on them is. Let's see, make sure that they're not like citations or anything that's uh, very easy to get. All right, um, okay, all right, okay. So and here's yeah. So these are the types of things that you want to be looking at. First of all, you want to see the type of referring domains. Like, is it actually a powerful, powerful website? Now you would want to look into this. So uh Demos, this thing, um this page right here. Like you would be wanting to make sure that their most powerful uh, assets, like what type of website is it that it's linking over to? So what is this? So it's a directory. It is a directory sort of set up site. Okay. All right, that's an interesting one. That is an interesting one. Is it worth going after this domain? Is that toxic? Is this one toxic? Well, let's go back. Another thing that I look at, and I, I pay massive, some people don't pay importance to it, but I do, Anchor Text. Anchor Text will tell you everything you need to know about the domain. And honestly, you can start, I start with the keywords because whatever they're ranking for, that's what Google thinks that they're about. Whatever anchor text has been sent in is what someone else had influence over and they were trying to push. So keywords will show you what Google associated the domain with. And then anchor text will show you where the individual that owns said domain was trying to push their product. So if you think about that, that's the best way of researching a expired domain. So you can have a look in here. Okay, cool. So this must have been the bloke that owned it. You know, all right, all right cool, cool, cool. This is looking good. For me, this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good. So if I was to set up a PBN, right? If I was to sit here and be like, okay, I want a, an accounting PBN to help boost up the profile of my websites. So far, I'm liking what SEMrush has to offer. Next step, Majestic. I do not ever just stop with one tool. Next tool is Majestic for me. Again, like I said before, I love Majestic. I love seeing and double checking that the trust flow actually is 21 
Citation flow is nine. That's always what we want to see. We want to see that the trust flow is a lot stronger. Citation flow, eh. This is the thing that's important. Now, also, anchor text, guys. Come have a look at the anchor text. See what the anchor text actually is in Majestic. What have they got pulling in? If I have a look at it, yep, accountant, CPA, fantastic. You know, Mr. Z CPA certified. This is what we want to see when we're performing research. Okay, cool. I'm happy with this. I'm loving this. I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. What's the next step to research and look at this expired domain? Wayback machine. So the Wayback machine, we've looked at it. We've gone, okay, this isn't too bad. I could set up some PBN. I could set this asset up as a PBN. I could set this asset up as a as for a client's website, perhaps. Perhaps I've just landed an accountant and they're happy with that domain. They're like, yeah, I'm happy with Mr. Z CPA. You know, maybe they're called, I don't know, Zillow Accounting. I don't know, something like that. And they're happy with it. They're cool with it. So we're building a website on it. Next thing is Wayback Machine. Throw it into the Wayback Machine. Now, this is the final step, but it's I don't value this as important as the other steps. Okay, I think what Google rewarded them for keywords is the most important because that's Google telling you what, that Google was happy to reward that site for. Beautiful. So it's got that it's got that trend history. Next thing is is the anchor text because you can actually see what someone's intentions were with that anchor text. If you start to see all this weird different stuff, you're starting to see oh, they're probably just using it to make it powerful. So that's an important thing to remember. So 2016 was when the keywords were getting pulled in. Let's have a look. So with Wayback Machine, whenever you're doing domain, uh, whenever you're looking at expired domains and you're trying to like really evaluate an expired domain, if you don't know how to use a Wayback Machine, I do have a video on it um, and I'll make sure that pops up. But you can essentially hover over the blue dots, this blue dot here, open up in a new tab. So let me just open up a couple of them, guys, because sometimes it won't be too fantastic. So let me just open up two of them. All right. So yeah, we can see <laughs> this is this is a uh, she's an old one. She's definitely an old style website. All right, now, but it's good for me immediately. I can determine. I can sit here confidently, confidently, and sit here and be like, "Ah, oh, it was about accounting." All right, cool. Now this was from 2016. Let's have a look at the other one. Same snapshot. Let's go back to some snippets where it's picked it up for some reason over here. Like, why was it picked up? Was it because someone was just parking it somewhere? That's a possibility, but that's why you want to have a look. So we want to ascertain if this expired domain has just been used as, as something to, yeah, it's been parked. Okay. So someone might've been trying to warm it up. So if you see this, this isn't a, this isn't a cause for concern, but if you were to go back through here and then you found, I don't know, let's say like Joe blogs, it was all in Mandarin or something like that. Poof. That's it. Immediately it's gone. But generally speaking, if a website has any other type of foreign language on it, generally speaking, there will be at least one anchor text of that. So you'll catch it in the anchor text. Immediately, if you catch it in the anchor text, brrr, it's out of there. See you later, guys. You're not, you're not getting it. All right. So when you're looking for expired domains, this is all things that you want to follow. These are the steps that I utilize. If I saw like this website right now, I'd be pretty happy with this. This would be a PBN for me. I would, if again, if a, an accountant come along and was like, yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind that domain name. I'd probably use it. So now you should know how to fire, uh, how to find expired domains. You should know how to research expired domains to ensure that you grab something that's actually a good expired domain and not something that's trashy. It's important to focus more so on trust flow than it is any other metric. That's the main way I approach it myself. Look at past ranking keywords, then look at the anchor text because that'll tell you what they're trying to build. And then Wayback Machine, if everything looks good in the Wayback Machine, you've got something that might work well for you. Just be aware, you even know these tools might tell you that you have these links. You'll throw the website back up and those links are gone. Something to be very cautious of when you are building on expired domains. Now, if you now, now know how to find expired domains, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. If I've helped you in 
any way, shape, or form, hit that like and subscribe. Make sure you let me know about the methods that you utilize to find expired domains. 